Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the Oakland Raiders. So with that, let's get out to the East Bay and Oakland, California. On the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, it is a building that has seen it all through the many years of its existence as EA Sports welcomes you to Oakland, California. The pregame festivities here in Oakland have to be seen to be believed. This crowd in silver and black, they are fired up as their Raiders get set to face off with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So here comes the Raider offense now onto the field. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State. Derek Carr. The thing I like most about Derek Carr's game is not just the right arm and his touch and his ability to find receivers. I think it's his calmness, and I think that transmits itself very well to the rest of the team. They feed off of that, and they go out and play with confidence. Right down. 54 miles. Watch the curve, watch the curve. Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. And to the left side here, Wilson. The completion good for three and it's second down. On your screen now, here are the offensive starters. At wideout, Antonio Brown is certainly someone that the defense always has to account for. Without a doubt, a true number one receiver, it doesn't matter to him how defenses want to cover him. He sees it as a challenge and knows how to defeat him. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. On the ground, this is Jalen Richard. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Ziggy Ansah. The Seahawks, here's their defensive lineup. Ezekiel Ansah out of BYU. We call him Ziggy, and he knows where the quarterback is on every play. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Play action. Now it's Carr. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Townsend to punt it. Back deep for the Seahawks, Tyler Lockett. This is taken at the 15. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Here come the Seahawks in their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. They'll be led out by their 5'11 quarterback from Wisconsin by way of NC State, and that's Russell Wilson. He's always been an incredible decision maker on the field. Takes care of the ball really well, puts his team in the right positions, makes sure the play calls are accurate. 
also was a minor league baseball player. Didn't hit very well there. I think he made a great career choice picking football. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 24. From the shotgun, Wilson. They'll roll him out right. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. And one of the big bodies helping out this offense is your boy, Upati. And all he wants to do is have running plays called, fire out, and smack people. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson, and he finds Penny. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Wilson. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. From his linebacker spot, Vontez perfect with a sack. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Wilson on target there to Moore. Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. David Moore, 72 yards. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. Just a four-play drive that time. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 26. The throw complete here to Williams. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. Go! 
So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Here's Carr. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 14 yards is the pickup there at a Raider first. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. To throw, it's Carr. Man open left side, it's Williams. That throw good for four. It's second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. To throw his car. And that is incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's we no good. This. And this score will stay right where it is. It was a kicker from that distance, 56, 57 yards. So many things you got to worry about. But I am a little surprised he didn't get it there. Yeah, with the way kickers are nowadays, we're surprised anything under 65 that it doesn't get at least to the crossbar. But remember this. You have to drive it a little bit lower in order yeah. to make that distance, and you also have to be worried about the interior rush that they can get their hands on it. So that's why those stronger kickers nowadays who can pop it up in the air and still travel and carry it, that's who you're looking for. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And he'll take this from 147-yard line to the other. A gain of six. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And there's the first tackle of the game for Carl Joseph. He's one of those safeties that you can utilize in any way you want. But I will have to say, I think the number one thing he does best is tackle. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Only two there on the dump off. It's third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. On third and one, Wilson. He's got Lockett. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Seahawk football here to start quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Wilson. And it's hauled in by Ed Dixon. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Go, 
Hey, the lady! Mike 54! Man, that's trash! That's trash! Deuce, 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 deuce! Hey. On first down, Carson, and he will score! Touchdown, Seattle! Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. And there the counter play proves successful for the touchdown. What typically makes a counter play in general successful, Charles? Well, what you're trying to do, Brandon, is to get the team moving in one direction, meaning the defense. Get them going in one direction and then wall them off with your blocking and bring it back in the other direction. That way, you don't actually have to punish them with your blocking. You just position them. And if you have any kind of a good back, he'll take full advantage of it and gain good yardage. So that drive spanned five plays, and it was all capped off by the Chris Carson touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Let's go! Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. They fake the handoff, now Carr. That's caught by his tight end, Foster Moreau. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Carr on the bootleg. Man open left side is Brown. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Throwing now is Carr. Caught out right by Renfro. Four yards the pick up, first down. Carr now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. Eight of 10, it's first down. Here's Carr to throw. Throw left side, taken in by Renfro. And down he goes at the 49, a three yard pickup. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Car to throw again. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. Throwing his car on third down. And he locates Luke Wilson. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 40. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Oh 
Carl come up here with a first and 10. And he's five for six now throwing the ball on this drive. Again, they'll throw with Carr. And now the ball's out. Carr lost it. Fumble. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. On play action, now Carr. Wide open receiver complete. A first down there on a pick up to 25. Here we go. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Shotgun now for Carr. Throwing the out route and complete. That's Grant. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. What now? Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime preview. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. But, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print it, I'm going to read it. I'm Brandon Gaughan. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. From the gun, it's Carr. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Only a yard in the completion. It's second and goal. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Here's another second and goal, this time from half the distance closer. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. He's at the 50, 30, 20, 10. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Touchdown. Partner, what we just saw, that's a great example of a team that was really amped up. They've been playing so well, yet they didn't get overexcited 
and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play. Instead, they created their own big play with a pick six. This one may be over. Yeah, it's just the first half, but that lead is swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already. The extra point now coming from Myers. And it is now 21 to nothing. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. Now Carr to try again after the pick six. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, Carr, Renfro bringing it in over the middle. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. and 10. Here's Carr. He's got Wilson, middle of the field. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really good pickup of 28 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, 
something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open. That makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. Carlson able to put this one through. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. After the made field goal, Carl Sinell sets up to kick this away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel is somewhat safe that might actually pop and turn into a big play, that's what you usually run in this situation. Or go four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? <laughs> you're just feeling it. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. This fielded at the two. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spend the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half nice first half that we've had guys but be prepared for some change-ups we're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half see how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively from the 32 now here's first and 10 here we go D it's just, it's just, it's just me and you it's right. now it's Wilson and it's hauled in by Nick Vanette. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now a man who played collegiately here in the Golden State, Rashad Penny. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 17 more yards. They had 17 on the previous snap as well. 
Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Carson. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now Wilson. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Open man, it's Benan. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Wilson going to fake the give and keep it himself. Left side complete to lock it. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Wilson will throw again. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to... And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown run. Here the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run, making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle, no running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. Now Myers for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's finished off by a Rashad Penny touchdown run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. 
So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most half? Of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive, and he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Hey, we're good, we're good. 180. That's it. From the 25 on second down, Carr. Throw right side, complete to Williams. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. First down, Carr, and nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. On the draw, Richard trying to run inside, but nothing there. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Operating from the gun, Carr. He's got a man open. It's Hunter Renfro. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 44-yard line. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Carr gives to Richard. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, Carr. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Back now in the East Bay. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Knocked away and incomplete. Tyrell Williams was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. 
Back to the running game with Jacobs. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the five yard line. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. To throw, it's Carr. Blitz coming and down he goes. We've been around this league for a while and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. They're already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. So that'll back him up five. The critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Carr. And this is going to be incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. So a tough pill to swallow there. A would-be touchdown pass in and out of his hands on fourth. Sometimes it just comes down to execution, doesn't it? Because we're always questioning, should they go for it? Should they not? Is it the right play call? Is it not? In this situation, everything was right except for the finish. You have to catch the ball and convert. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. Been a very strong performance for them, really on both sides of the football. The turnover on downs, the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap, been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless, take care of the ball on the way out. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 18. Let's get off the field, D. Let's get off the field. Get, 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 get. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Wilson's pass complete to Van Ed, And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Pretty solid run here on first down. Almost picked up another first, but he appears to be a few inches short. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Seven yards there and a first down. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, take, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. They'll run on first down. It's Carson, and this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this cut, one home. Cut, cut. 
They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Well, not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And they have just about put this one on ice as they've got it here first and ten. Out to the right, he gets it to lock it. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. This is Carson. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Well, they'll take that every time with a lead first down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. You love that. They will take it. And you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down, have to stop them, have to get the football back. But eight yards on first down puts them back on their heels. On second down now, it's Carson. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. After the penalty, it's Penny. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. Well, this game is definitely over, but we do know some people like to go ahead and continue to add to their score, don't we? Yeah, I, I don't know that they need to add any more right now, though. I'm just starting to think about those dinner plans tonight, my friend. Well, you and I will be thinking about dinner plans, but we also know they're playing people are thinking, how can I get some more scores for my fantasy, for ever other things? They're trying to figure that part out now. By the way, last weekend we went sushi because that's what you wanted. We're going steak tonight. I'm in. All right. Myers connects on the PAT, and the lead will swell by one more. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's finished off by a Rashad Penny touchdown run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team 
and we were losing late in a game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Here's Carr, and to the left side here, Wilson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Carr. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And finally brought down at the 38. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And now on the pitch, the ball's loose. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. Second and 13, Carr. Man open left side is Brown. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. The Raiders on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, Carr. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. So here we go. The offense is going to stay out there. They're going for it on fourth and eight. Carr going to go on fourth down. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out. But for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Oakland, we sign off. So long, everybody.